right? 2.6 geometric proofs. So we're going to use our same thinking with our two column proofs, the statements and the reasons. But this time we're going to be talking more about geometric concepts. So go ahead and take a look at these theorems. Um, take a look at what they are, look one of them up, and see if you can figure out what all of them are. Uh, typically here I have then each group kind of explain it to the class. Um, obviously over a video that's not going to work. Um, but you want to make sure that you're clear kind of on, on what these things do. Um, so I will just run through them real quick, um, and then we're going to use them as we go. So the linear pair theorem is going to say that um, any, sorry, if two angles make up a line, then those angles are supplementary. Uh, definition of midpoint says that if something is a midpoint, uh, then it uh, divides the segment into two equal pieces. Definition of collinear says that if something is collinear, then those segments or those somethings, whatever they are, are on the same line, uh, those points. Uh, segment addition postulate says we can add two segments to get a big segment. Definition of segment bisector says if something is a segment bisector, then it cuts the segment into two equal pieces. Definition of angle bisector says if something is an angle bisector, then it cuts an angle into two equal pieces. Our reflexive, transitive, and symmetric, we just covered in 2.5. Uh, vertical angles theorem says if two things are vertical angles, then those two angles are congruent. Angle addition postulate uh, says you can add two small angles to make a bigger angle. And substitution, we also covered it in 2.5. So make sure you're familiar with what all those do. Um, we're going to go through the notes here with them, um, but if they're confusing, you may need to look them up just a little bit further. Um, so here are a couple more properties that aren't on this list, but are definitely could be tested and whatnot. Um, so you should make sure you're familiar with them. Um, all of those from 2.5. All right, so, and this is just a cool thing too. Any definition can be a reason in a proof because it is a statement of fact. So think of some definitions that we've used in this class before. Um, the one that's coming to my mind right away is definition of congruency. Oh, that's an end. Or of congruent. And this says if, um, I'm just gonna write this quick, right? If something is congruent, then it is also equal. And that is a biconditional, so that also works backwards, right? So if we have two things that are equal, uh, then we also know that they are congruent as well, uh, whatever they are. So that's kind of a very vague definition, but yeah, we can use definition of anything we know, right? Definition of line segment, definition of what a line is, um, anything. Definition of vertical angles, any of those things. So let's use them. So go through this page, uh, give it your best shot. Um, see if you can write down what is the reasoning for all of the different um, things. You are definitely gonna repeat. Um, I guess we'll do the first one together here. So given that these two segments are congruent, how do I know their measurements are equal? Um, and as we mentioned, as I just mentioned, that's definition of uh, congruent. And maybe I should write the word out for this first time. Definition of congruent. All right, number two, E is the midpoint of BD, of segment BD. So then I know B, segment BE is congruent to ED. And this is just definition of midpoint. All right, there's a really good chance if you see a vocabulary word that the reasoning is going to be the definition of that. It's going to use that vocabulary word. Um, yeah, go ahead, try the rest on your own. Uh, come back and you will see the answers. All right, so here are the answers. Um, I'm just gonna go over some, some tricks um, and some of the common mistakes I see um, from doing this. Once again, you'll see a lot of these are just definitions, right? If they say midpoint in it, then definition of midpoint, right? If you've got the midpoint right there, there we go. Um, we've got the word bisect here, so that's gonna be definition of bisects. 
Um, if you see congruent, you're going to see that basically we're setting the same thing equal and congruent to each other, right? The, the segment measure and then the segment itself. Um, so when we start getting into some of these more complicated ones, okay, here's complementary as well. That's the definition of complementary. It says that two angles add up to 90 degrees. Um, but when we get to some of the more difficult ones, you got to kind of take a step back, right? So you got to think to yourself, is this a linear pair theorem or is this definition of a linear pair? Um, and the difference between those two things are going to be the word supplementary, right? Um, if we're using definition of linear pair, we'll say something about these two angles lie on a line or are adjacent, um, something like that. But the linear pair theorem states that if you are a linear pair, which is what the first part is, then they are supplementary. So that's the linear pair theorem. Uh, vertical angles here is another tough one. So here we're given a picture of vertical angles, and then we're told angle 8 and angle 9 are vertical. Uh, this is going to be the definition of vertical angles. Remember, vertical angle theorem says if we have vertical angles, then they are congruent. There's nothing about being congruent in this picture, so we know it's just the definition of what vertical angles are. Where if we go down to number 10, it says we're given that they're vertical, and our conclusion is that they're congruent. So now that's the vertical angle theorem because we're saying that if I'm given vertical angles, then I know they're congruent. Um, some other ones here, here we have angle addition postulate, right? We're saying that two angles add up to make a bigger angle. So that's angle addition postulate. Um, supplementary here. And I know we are saying two angles add up to make a bigger angle, um, but because we have the word supplement here, then we are using definition of supplementary. Um, notice this angle was just a part of these two angles, right? It's the bigger part of it. Um, and then this is the other tricky one here. So remember, we can be given things in terms of words, or we can be given things in terms of figures. Because we're using the same um, angle markings here, that's a way to tell us that those two angles are congruent um, from the picture. So that's just going to be a given uh, a given answer. I, I know that was a lot of information, um, but you just, it's really, um, if you pay attention to what you read, that should be a clue to the answer, right? If I say angle TOM is the supplement of angle SUE, then there's a really good chance definition of supplement is going to be my reasoning. So if you see a geometry vocabulary where there's a really good chance you're going to use that as your reasoning. All right, so let's get into some proofs here. All right, so here you are given three steps, or three answers here. So we're gonna use those answers in our proof. Um, so the first thing that we always start a proof with, okay, remember, is that our given. So what is the given information here? Oh, it's this. Okay, cool. So that's going to be angle one and angle two are straight angles. All right, that's given to us. That's where we start. Okay. What we're trying to prove or what we want to finish with is always going to be your last statement. So if I'm trying to prove angle one is congruent to angle two, then I know this is going to be my last statement. Angle one is congruent to angle two, uh, which leaves me with just one more, but let's take a look at it, right? So the measurement of angle one equals 180 and the measurement of angle two equals 180, right? So this is going to be definition of straight angles. And I know that's our only option left. But remember what I said is that if you see a vocabulary word in your proof, there's a really good chance you're going to use definition of that vocabulary word somewhere else. And if we look at step three here, we have the measurement of angle one equals measurement of angle two. This is just a step of substitution, right? We know measurement of angle one is 180. We know 180 is equal to measurement of angle two, so I can substitute it in um, to get substitution. And then our last one is that if the measurements of the two angles are equal, then we know the two angles are congruent because that's the definition of congruent. All right, another one very similar to that last one. Uh, go ahead, I'll let you do that one on your own. Um, most of the answer is all in this plan um, in terms of sentences. But I'm gonna move on to this one. Because uh, this is going to be our first proof where we really have nothing and we're trying to prove something. Um, notice there might be extra 
rows and stuff in our proof, and that's fine. We'll just leave them blank if they are. All right, so for this one, remember, we always start with what we're given. So RT, segment RT, is congruent to segment SU. And that's going to be given. All right, and now that we've used up all of our givens, it's time to start seeing what that does for us. So I know based on that, that this RT is congruent to SU. All right, let me just start off with, this is a pretty tough proof. Huh? So if you're not seeing it right away, that's totally okay. My next step though is gonna be that ST is congruent to ST. So I know that that is congruent to itself. And anytime something is congruent to itself, then you can use the reflexive property. All right, we're now gonna kind of work our way backwards and say that RT is equal to SU, meaning that the measurement of those two are going to be equal. And this is definition of congruency. We're also gonna say the same thing about ST. We're gonna say ST is equal to ST, and this is gonna be definition of congruency as well. All right, and now that we have that, um, we can kind of see what we're trying to get here. Remember, our last step is going to be what we're trying to prove, which is RS is equal to TU. So remember this blue ST is here, so now we're trying to prove that RS is equal to TU. And we can actually do this through the subtraction property. And the reason we can do this is because if we take RT, right, and we subtract, so you take RT minus ST, then you're given just RS. Okay? And we can do the same thing, right, if this is S, we get rid of this section here, we're just left with RS. We can do the same thing for SV, so that leaves us that RS is equal to TU from that subtraction property. Once again, pretty tough proof there. Um, if you struggle with that one, totally okay. Um, something like that would not be on the test yet. We'll do much more practice with proofs before that happens. All right, so that is geometric proofs. Um, it's a little bit tougher. Um, if you're able to do something like this, this is what we're going to be looking for on the test. It's just that you can use those reasonings to help you out. Um, if you're able to do a proof like this, um, you're definitely ahead of the curve.